Okay, so let's start the last session of today before the poster session. Our next speaker is Thierry Deutsch of the COA Grenoble. He will talk about uh, adaptive and localized basis, set basis functions for linear scaling, large systems, and complex quantum mechanical system simulations. Thanks, Paul. So I would like first to thank the organizer for this invitation. Um, so in my case, I will talk about wavelets. So uh, the idea is to replace the plane, plane waves by uh, wavelets, because with wavelets, in fact, we don't have the, the problem of, um, of, uh, of to treat all the system, for, to, for instance, to calculate the kinetic term. But we can, because wavelets are, have a support compact, then uh, we can localize our operation in a small range of the real space. So uh, wavelets are, uh, are systematic and orthogonal, localized and adaptive. So in, for instance, in this case, you have two levels of wavelets. Here, you have only scaling function, so in red. And in blue, you have the details, only in, uh, in a region near the, radio, uh, near the nu nucleus. Because uh, the support is compact, we, we developed a different uh, portion solver because we can have naturally a different boundary conditions, okay? Free, wire, surfaces. And we, we use for that a formulation of based on green, uh, green function to solve the portion solver. And of course, we can explicit, uh, explicitly treat uh, the charge systems. So, for uh, for a water molecule, first we have a grid step, an extension for the finer region where we have two uh, levels of resolution, and then we have a second level with an extension where we have only one uh, level of resolution, so this is a coarse region. So in the case of plane wave, uh, of wavelet, we don't have a, a closed form. So what we have is a scaling relation. So we have a, filt uh, a set of filters. So in our case, we have roughly uh, 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 15 uh, filters. And we have a relation uh, with the scaling function and the scaling function at, at an higher resolution. And what we manipulate, in fact, is the filters. So uh, all operations for us are short convolutions. So it's quite GPU friendly, and this is why we developed, we have been developing GPU, uh, big DFT on GPU uh, for 10 years. So we have our two level of resolution using uh, two kind of wavelets, and with that, we use uh, pseudo potential. So uh, we need, because we use pseudo potential, we need two level of resolution. It's like we have a cutoff energy multiplied by four for some region of the space. So it's enough to have uh, two levels. And uh, you can see that uh, for the first three rows, we have a very good accuracy. And a delta of, uh, for delta test, we have a benchmark of one for all, uh, all, uh, all tests in, uh, in, this, uh, in this benchmark. Um, now, at the present day, we, are, uh, we have the version 1.8. So we can do uh, 3D periodic surface on free boundary conditions. We use AGH pseudo potential. We have a very high precision because everything is analytic. Our uh, filters are analytics. Uh, and and um, we can do concham, so ground states for metals. Uh, we have Van der Waals and hybrid functionals. Uh, we develop also a portion solver uh, for systems embedding in electrostatic environments, so we can do uh, calculation with implicit solvent. Uh, we have also a library of structure or structural prediction based on minimal hoping as the method uh, developed by Stefan Godecker, and we also develop the order and uh, implementation. Now, I think this year we will have, uh, we, we, we could calculate non orthorhombic cells. Uh, PAW uh, pseudo potential, and we, de we are developing also linear response, TDDFT. Okay, so in our code, uh, we, are, we, 
we choose to, to renderize our code in order to have a better maintainability. So we have different components. For instance, uh, we have Futile, which is a low-level uh, um, library. So uh, this is used uh, to process uh, the output, the input files, to have an idea of the timing, also uh, for the allocation of memory. Uh, and it's, it's, it's quite uh, useful and decreases a lot the number of, uh, of lines needed. We have also our own Gaussian integral for some part of the code based on uh, Fiesta GW code. You have a talk from uh, Stefan about chess. So, uh, and we have also the potion solver, which is used in, uh, in the other code, uh, for instance, Abinit and CP2K, not this, need, need, not this version, but another one. And we use uh, our potion solver to calculate, of course, the archery potential and the exchange part. So about the exchange part, so uh, uh, last year we, we developed uh, on GPU uh, the calculation of hybrid functionals. So when you use uh, an exchange part, you, you need to evaluate the potion solver uh, n square, if n is the number of atoms. And for that, if you compare on a blue jean machine, you can see that the ratio between PB and PB is zero on the same uh, on the same system, atomic system, is 25 in our case. For, uh, for uh, a, a quite large system, uh, three, uh, more than 300 atoms. If you use piece dent on CPU, and if you compare on... Uh, sorry? Gamma. Gamma is a ratio between uh, the, the time to calculate in PBE0 and PBE. Okay? And if you compare uh, the, uh, between PB and PB0 and PZ, you have a ratio of, of 15. And if you port uh, the potion solver part, you can decrease this ratio even more. If everything is done on GPU, you have a, only a ratio of uh, 3.5. It means that with the, the GPU and GPU direct, you can decrease a lot the, the, the amount of time needed to calculate the uh, exchange part. So here you can see that for some systems, so uh, it was a collaboration with the Argon Laboratory, so we did uh, that for uh, the uranium oxide systems. So you can see the number of orbitals. It's quite important uh, uh, in function of the number of atoms. So even for a large number of orbitals, we can do that on a piece dent, and we, we decrease considerably uh, the, the ratio to calculate PB0. For instance, here, in function of the computing nodes, you can see that uh, one cell concentration takes 10 seconds, and uh, if we use a GPU, then we can also for uh, not so large uh, amount of time, we can do uh, 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 hybrid functional on, uh, on large systems. Okay, so this was about the uh, cubic version of Big DFT, so it's like plane wave. Our concham orbitals are, look, are, are totally uh, in, uh, uh, spread in, uh, in uh, the world systems, and uh, so we have a scaling, of course, of n cube. Uh, due to the linear algebra because we have dense matrix and now the idea is to decrease this scaling. So uh, to do that, the idea in fact is to localize. So with the potion solver we have n log n, so it's okay. Uh, the convolution is n square. One convolution takes, uh, uh, takes n, uh, n operation in function of the uh, number of atoms, but if we uh, multiply by two we have two times convolution to perform for, uh, for orbitals, so it's n square. And uh, the, the main part is in algebra. So the idea is to have a new approach, and the idea uh, is to localize our uh, orbitals. So we, we use uh, our wavelet to express a localized optimized minimal basis set. So the concham orbitals are uh, are in the world system, and then what we decide is for each atom, we have a radius, and we, uh, we optimize a minimal basis set for each atom. For example, for silicon, we can minimize 
four orbitals, four localized orbitals. These orbitals are expressed on wavelet, okay? And we optimize in situ during, during uh, the, uh, the iterations. So in this case, the density matrix is expressed in our support function or minimal basis set. And uh, because the, you, you don't have an overlap between the different uh, uh, support functions, so uh, localized orbitals, then our uh, matrix, so the Hamiltonian and uh, the density matrix, uh, become sparse. And so uh, what we have is a set of localized optimized minimal basis set with a, a very small uh, number. For example, for silicon, we can use four or even uh, nine, if you like, uh, orbitals per atoms. So we have two steps. The first is to optimize, and the second is uh, to express uh, the density and the matrix and calculate the next iteration. Okay, so if we compare uh, with the cubic version, so in the cubic version, uh, because uh, you have the dense matrix, uh, you, you have uh, some difficulties to, uh, to do a large calculation. And contrary to the linear scaling, uh, you can say that we can, uh, we can uh, calculate for a large number of atoms. Um, linear, uh, the CPU time is linear, but also the memory. So we decrease a lot the memory because uh, uh, the, 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 the orbitals are localized. Another point is uh, we know the times what we can do per, per atom. For instance, uh, in our case here, uh, we do uh, uh, 20 minutes for uh, 8,000 uh, atoms, but what we can calculate, in fact, is a, is a, is a CPU time per atom. Roughly for this, uh, this system, so silicon, germanium, uh, the first three rows, it takes uh, between five and ten minutes uh, to calculate the self-consistent iteration for one atom. So you know that you, if you have 1,000 atoms, you will take roughly 10,000 minutes for the whole system. And if you double the, the size of the system, it took 20,000 uh, 20, minutes. Okay? And you dig, you, you if you divide by the number of processors, of course, to have the whole time. But this is, uh, is possible to predict uh, easily uh, the time you need to calculate. Uh, if we compare with, uh, with uh, cubic code, uh, we have uh, an absolute energy difference of the order of 10 mEV per atom, and this is constant and not depending on the position of the atoms. And the forces are almost exact in the sense that we have the same forces. Uh, another point which is really important is for large systems, because we have few uh, localized uh, uh, adapted orbitals per atom, we have a few uh, number of basis functions. Okay? One million, for instance, for 2,000 uh, uh, key uh, atoms. And this is interesting because uh, you, can, you can use easily, uh, you can have small matrices, you have small matrices, and you perform uh, uh, larger calculations. So just some uh, features about the localized optimal minimal basis set. So you, you see, you saw this transparent, this slide, uh, yes, uh, no, this morning uh, uh, from uh, Stefan Mohr. So uh, I would like to point out about the characteristics of our basis set. So we have accurate results because we have a good localization and because for each atom we have a different minimal basis set. Okay? For two different silicon, uh, silicon atoms, if you have an, a different environment, you have a different uh, uh, optimized uh, orbitals. So we have a low number of degrees of freedom. We have a low condition number in the sense that the overlap matrix is almost is quasi-orthogonal. So here you can see that it's almost one. It means that it's quasi-orthogonal. The second point is because we use pseudo-potential and because uh, due to how um, our scheme to, uh, to optimize our minimal uh, our, uh, orbitals, uh, we have a small spectral width. And this is really important for the chess, uh, chess uh, 
a chess algorithm because due to this uh, small spectral width, we can use uh, very efficiently this kind of algorithms. And of course, the sparsity is uh, between, uh, between 90 and uh, almost uh, uh, more than 90%. It depends, it depends on the system, of course, and on the size of the systems. Uh, so, uh, Stefan Moore did uh, a simulation of 2,000, uh, uh, no, more than 200,000 atoms. Uh, we, we show in this article that we can do for uh, a very different uh, um, systems, so uh, DNA, uh, water, perovskite, uh, amino acid, silicon, nanowires, uh, many things. And sometimes it's... Uh, Uh, the linear scaling, the, the linear version is um, uh, converged better than the cubic one. It depends, but sometimes this is the case. So the question, what we, what we ask, uh, in fact, uh, ourselves uh, two years ago, is what do we need so large scale uh, DFT? So we can do very large calculation, okay? And uh, do we need uh, for uh, to, to, to perform very large calculations? So for biology, traditionally they use force fields, coarse grading. You for chemistry, uh, what is really important is not the size but the transferability and the accuracy of results. So for quantum uh, chemistry method, uh, they can use few atoms. And in the case of DFT. Uh, Traditionally, we use up to 1,000 atoms, and 1,000 is quite large. So we think that effectively it's important to, to have the possibility to do a full uh, DFT calculation in order to test the different uh, solutions and in order to reduce the information. So in uh, this article, uh, we review uh, the different uh, large-scale uh, quantum mechanical calculation. So uh, uh, we, we try to, to have a, a quite fair review with uh, some results from one tap, some results from SIESTA on other codes, linear scaling, and not only. And what we think is uh, the linear scaling is important to bridge the gap between the different methods. In the fragment uh, approach, uh, you, you use an approximation when you say, in fact, my basic set doesn't relax uh, for, uh, for the different fragments. For instance, for, uh, if you have a solvent, you describe all uh, molecules of the solvent in the same way. And this is uh, quite fair if, uh, you don't have, if you have only some electrostatic uh, interaction. Of course, if you have some uh, quantum, um, quantum interaction, If you have some, um, uh, some uh, overlap between the orbital, it's not, uh, it's not feasible. Uh, DFT, uh, so, uh, yes. So, with the linear scaling, now we are testing different approaches on models. So, fragments, as I said, constrain DFT because we have a localized uh, uh, adaptive orbital. You can constrain. Uh, the charge uh, in a different part of the molecule or in different molecules. So you can do charge transfer. Uh, one possibility is to calculate, and we did that, for instance, uh, with uh, uh, the GW uh, Fiesta code. We calculate some excitation. We do the charge transfer, and we have, uh, using only delta SCF, we have the right, the right energy of the excitations. So we can calculate excitation as soon as we know uh, the charge transfer associated to that. We can do also some atomic charge analysis, and this is important uh, if you want to, have, uh, to go to the QMMM, and if you want to compare with the uh, force field. For example, polarizable force field uh, is, uh, uses use a representation of the atomic charge on the atom and also the dipole, and It's important uh, if you want to, to compare with, uh, with uh, force field, uh, polarizable force field to, to know if we have the, right, the same answer or not. So we do that in water, in water for instance. And, uh, an, an idea what we explore now is uh, to use force, uh, force field to do a molecular dynamics. Then we extract some snapshot. 
and we calculate uh, some uh, uh, quantum mechanics quantities, for instance, uh, the uh, atomic charge, uh, uh, the overlap of the orbitals, and then we can have a statistic on, uh, on that. So, uh, combining, uh, combining uh, classical and DFT is, uh, is feasible. Another point is to have an idea of the impact of the electrostatic environment. So using an explicit uh, solvent or an implicit solvent and comparing all these results. And so to that, we need first to duplicate our localized adapted orbital. So for instance, for water, you optimize uh, the orbitals for one molecule of water and then you duplicate uh, your uh, basis set without optimizing. So this is an approximation, yes, but it's quite fair if you are very far from your protein uh, you want to, uh, to calculate or uh, if you want to have an idea of the influence of, of the water. So it enables mani manipulation of optimized basis set uh, and we develop an efficient and precise roto translation of localized orbitals be because behind that we have uh, a grid and we have wavelet. So we can uh, reformat very accurately our minimal basis set and so avoiding to optimize all the system. Um, I would like to point out that if you avoid to, uh, to optimize the basis set, uh, we, we gain a factor of 10 for the calculations. So one application is to calculate the charge transport in organic lead. So uh, from coarse graining, we have some statistics, so uh, some, uh, some organic uh, films composed to two kinds of molecules, so the host molecule and the gas molecule. Then we optimize our localized uh, basis set for these uh, two kinds of, of uh, host molecule and gas molecule. And we calculate for each molecule uh, the site energies and the transfer energies uh, uh, for an electron to go to one molecule to another one. So we have a statistic and then we use this statistic in some model uh, based on uh, Marcus uh, theory. Yeah. So because, uh, because we can, uh, because we have with the linear scaling, uh, we, we need to have more complex uh, files, more complex input files, because we need to uh, express our fragment. We need to say, to, to, to say uh, where the, the solvent is implicit or, or, or uh, whether the solvent is explicit. And we need also to process how hard output files. So uh, what we want is to use a, a, an input file which is uh, a human readable. So for that, we use a markup language. To, to have the notion to go to, uh, to workflows, what could be nice is to, to use an, an output file uh, as an input file in the sense that we can use the input, output files to rerun the calculation. So we want to parse easily and process this input and, and output file. Uh, and uh, for that, we develop the Fortran Futile Library. Uh, and uh, we, have, uh, we have a class of objects, uh, Python dictionaries, and with that we can build easily uh, in the code uh, some uh, YAML, uh, YAML uh, input files. So, uh, we use YAML because YAML is a markup language which is re really easy to, uh, to read. Uh, it's used for all configuration files now for Unix. And you have a very uh, efficient uh, YAML parser in different script language. So the idea, so we developed that. So uh, uh, I'll show you an example of, uh, of YAML. So you have a key and some values. And for the values, you can have also another dictionary or you can have a, a list or another dictionary. And so you, you can put also some comments. And what is really interesting also, if you change, for instance, uh, your input file, you can add another line, and because uh, for, the, for the program it's a tree, uh, the tree is, he, he, uh, is not changed, you have only uh, one, uh, uh, one leaf. So with that, we develop many things so using uh, notebooks, and we use, uh, we use that to process our code, for instance, for the timing, 
uh, and uh, it's, it's easy for us to, to process and, uh, and to have an idea of the performance of our code. So, in conclusion, I think with linear scaling DFT, we open uh, up uh, new possibilities. So, uh, we can reduce the degrees of freedom so to perform large systems, even of moderate, system, uh, moderate um, uh, computers. We have different levels of description. I think it's important to explore all these uh, descriptions. And uh, the, the future directions are uh, in constraint DFT, QMMM, doing statistics, uh, also trying to uh, ex extract atomic multiples uh, from our QM calculation, and we are also exploring a linear response time-dependent uh, DFT. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, very nice talk. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to know in your fragment approach, how do you select the fragments? Is it a manual operation or there yes, is a way? it's manual operations. But uh, it's manual operation, so we know. We know the fragment. And now we are working to try to use the, uh, uh, the fragment approach for solid. And what we can do, so for instance for here, what we can calculate, in fact, is a kind of density matrix Uh, for these molecules, and we can say if this density matrix is idempotent. So if it's almost idempotent, then you can say that the, the approximation is quite correct. So this is easy for this kind of, uh, of uh, systems, but if we want to do, for instance, for graphene, we can do also the same things. We can say, okay, I, I select a, a small fragment of graphene, and uh, I do the same thing. And uh, in this case, it's more tricky, but it works. But we don't have uh, uh, an operator like uh, this uh, kind of density metric to say, yes, uh, this ap approximation of fragment is correct. But for molecular system, yes, it's, uh, it's easy to do that. So are you also working on embed embedding approach? In that yeah, case? so we have a potion solver uh, using a PCM. So uh, we have also an embedding approach here. And, uh, yes, and we compare between explicit solvent, implicit solvent, and so on. Okay, we thank our speaker again. The next speaker is Jörg Hutter.